Welcome to this week's episode of Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for Wednesday, January 9th, 2013. We begin with exciting news from the world of biology, particularly botany. A scientist from the University of Wisconsin is preparing an experiment to be sent to the International Space Station. That might not sound very exciting, but this experiment could be crucial to understanding how plants grow in zero gravity. This is important because for any kind of long-term space travel, the astronauts are going to need to grow plants, both as a renewable source of food and as a way to replenish the ship's oxygen supply. Plants have been grown on the ISS before, but the long-term effects haven't been studied and the results carefully analyzed. And since everything on Earth has evolved in the presence of gravity, there may be some unexpected difficulties. For example, it's possible that plants could suffocate. That may seem counterintuitive considering that plants produce oxygen, but the roots of a plant consume oxygen from tiny air pockets in the soil. This is why plants die when the ground gets flooded. The air in the soil gets completely replaced by water. Gravity is the cause of buoyancy and convection currents, helping to mix air around both above and below the ground. It's these potential low oxygen conditions that are the main focus of the experiment. Both genetically modified and unmodified seeds of the Arabidopsis plant will be sent up in March, where they will be germinated and grown for eight days in the microgravity environment. After, they'll be frozen and sent back down for analysis, examining the genetic and biochemical processes that happen inside the plant under these conditions. Also comparing it to plants grown in a simulated ISS environment, except obviously with gravity. If the plants don't fare well, research may be needed to adapt them for living in microgravity. Next is a story from the world of neuroscience. Researchers from the University of Virginia have been using mice to take a more in-depth look at how memories are formed. Particularly, they focused on the hippocampus, associated with episodic memory. In humans, that means remembering specific events, and in simpler animals, it's used for remembering locations to help navigation. It was assumed that the hippocampus did this by recreating the neural activity in other parts of the brain that were present during the memory formation. Basically, a memory would be formed by neurons in the hippocampus making new connections to preserve some of the activation patterns in the rest of the cortex. This mechanism seemed likely, but it wasn't until now it could be directly tested like this. They began by genetically engineering the mice to produce two new proteins in their neurons. When a neuron fired, two fluorescent proteins were produced, a green one that lasted weeks, and a red one that decayed quickly. However, the scientists could control when these proteins were produced. So with the fluorescent protein switched on, they exposed the mice to a new environment with a unique order and eventually a mild shock. A few days later, they were put in the same environment and frozen place, anticipating the shock. Examining the hippocampus and other brain areas showed what neurons had been activated in the first exposure and in the most recent exposure. Around 40% of the original neurons also fired when the mouse was remembering. It's confirmed what many neuroscientists already suspected, but without direct experimentation it wouldn't be science. The scientists will continue to study memory formation using the mice and techniques like this. Well, hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please consider subscribing and be sure to check the links in the video description.